Welcome to the finish line with So Very Easy. My name is Laura and there are hundreds of different pantographs that we can choose from to have our quilts quilted. When we go to a long armor, there's lots to choose from and these are designs that they're able to use to guide their machines to quilt our quilts and they're fabulous designs. But there is a way we can take these and use them at home on our regular sit-down machines or our home domestic machines. The designs do vary in size and width and we can get double rows and single rows. This row is seven inches and it is a double row. At the top we do see the picture of what that pattern is going to look like once it is quilted. This is a six and a half inch wide and it is a single row. We still have registration marks that we're going to be able to follow, but it is only one row where this one had two rows. Here's another one that's six and a half inches and it's a single row. And these are all 144 inches long. There's a lot of different places that you can buy these. You can buy them online. You can buy them at quilt shops. These I have from Urban Elements. And the way we can use these for our home machine is to use them as marking guides. I want to take these marks and transfer them onto my quilt. And the easiest way is to transfer them to the back fabric of my quilt. And then I'm going to be quilting that quilt upside down. There's a few tips and techniques on how to use these papers to mark your back of your quilt. The first thing is we need to have a light colored background. So if you have a dark table, just get some Bristol board or some white paper to cover that surface. And it needs to be at least the same width as your pattern. And I'm going to put this right over top of that white paper. I will not be using the 144 inches. I will be using whatever I have for my counter space. When we look at these designs, this one has two rows and then along the outside we're going to have registration marks. Those are marks that's going to help us join this pattern to this row. So each row is going to be the same and this is going to help us join them. When we do use these to mark, the one thing we are going to have to use is a light colored fabric. The reason that we need a light colored fabric is so that we can see the pattern through this fabric. Once we know that we can see through this fabric, it's just a matter of marking our fabric. This particular design, it won't matter the direction. If it had words, I would have to use this pattern upside down. So I'd have to take this paper and turn it upside down. And that way when this quilt is turned right side, the writing is going in the right direction. If we need to use the back, we will need to take a magic marker and we can see through this paper and trace it so that we have the design on that reverse side. But this particular one can go either way so I won't need to put those extra drawings on the back. I need to transfer these markings onto the front of the fabric. So I have that non-good side facing down and I am drawing on the top. The reason is, is because I need to see this and I still need to sandwich this together. So all of my markings are going to go on the good side of the fabric. We of course need to have our background fabric a little bit bigger than the front of the quilt and it needs to be pressed. The designs on the pattern are usually darker than those registration marks. So we might need to darken those registration marks. If there's registration marks on both sides, be sure to mark both sides. Once our paper is marked and ready to go, we need to put a couple of pieces of tape just to hold this down. From here, I get to start my marking. We can transfer this design on our fabric going lengthwise widthwise or even on a diagonal. I do like to start in the center of my fabric, but instead of marking my fabric, I'm just going to fold it in half. 
I find the center of the pattern and then gently open this fabric up. Now that center line is in the center of the pattern or where I want it to be. What you mark it with is really up to you. I'm just going to start tracing these designs now. When I do trace them, I'm going to trace them in the order as I'm going to be quilting them. That way it sort of is like I'm quilting it before I've actually started quilting it. You might need to put some weights on the fabric to hold it still. So my drawing lines are going to be the same direction as I'm going to be using on the machine. And I would also recommend to transfer those registration marks, those little half patterns. It's going to help us match up for the next row. If you like to quilt in one direction and then quilt coming in the other direction, be sure to trace the pattern out going in both directions. And this helps us build the memory of what that pattern looks like and how we're going to need to move our hands. And I do make sure I go right off of both of the edges. Once those first two rows are done, I can just slide that fabric and I can use those registration marks to find the next edge. I can see through the fabric and match it up. That's going to help you line up the fabric so you can continue drawing those marks. If you find your fabric is moving too much, just place a ruler down on each side of that pattern and it's going to act like a weight and hold that fabric down flat. For this backing, I am using a water soluble marker, which means it's going to come out with some water. Now I have that entire back already marked, ready for me to go. There are some patterns that work a little bit better than others. And a lot of it will have to do with the size of the bed of our sewing machine. We only have a little space between that needle and the arm of that machine. So we do not want to get a very large pattern because then we're having to shove all of that one pattern in that arm. So finding a petite or a small pattern is good. I like to keep my size six and a half inches or seven inches. Another thing I try to avoid is a pattern that has a long line going down and then having to trail back and then coming forward. That long line is a little bit more difficult to put under that machine bed. Long armors have a big spot that they can work with. We have a small spot. So it's good to keep your patterns a little bit smaller and not with these long lines that you need to go back. Once you've done a couple of your backs this way, you're going to find some patterns are more comfortable for you to use versus others. But these are things that I try to find. Small patterns and not long trailing lines. So now I'm going to be able to put this away for another day and I can get my quilt ready for quilting. We can pin base, hand base, spray base, but the one that I would not recommend is an iron basting, which would be a fusible. I would not recommend ironing this due to the fact that we do not know if this ink is going to stay if we iron it. Unless you have tested it, I definitely would not iron this once it has been done. So I do like to mark my quilt right when I'm ready to have it quilted. The quilt is now ready to be quilted. I have my front, my batting, and my backing. So instead of quilting from the top, I get to flip it over and quilt from the back. For the back of the quilt, I'm going to be using 100% polyester and it's called wheat and it's Primo Soft Thread. This color, of course, is going to work on the back of the fabric. Even though this is the top spool, because I'm quilting upside down, this is the color I need for the back. The front of the quilt, which will be my bobbin, I'm going to use a little bit of a lighter color. And in this case, the color is cream. And these are these great pre-wound bobbins that I can just pop in the machine and I'm set to go. I'm gonna start off the fabric and come on. 
but I will be checking and making sure that this back fabric, which is the top of the quilt, is flat and that it hasn't turned over. And I'm going to quilt just like I would normally. The bonuses is I can see my lines very clearly. Here's an area that I'm going to have to go back, but this is a distance that I can handle. If I had to go from here all the way to there, I would be pulling and pulling and pulling until I get to that area. So it's nice that we can keep that quilting design within a workable area. And because I've already drawn this out numerous times, I already know where I'm going. It feels like I've already quilted it once. Just going to continue quilting. It's very easy to follow the pattern and it looks beautiful from the back side. And from the front, it looks just as nice. And it looks like we've taken it to a long armor and had it quilted. All I need to do is trim this off and put a binding on, wash out those back marks, and I'm done. Let me wash out those marks and I'll show you what it's going to look like. And when all those markings are gone, we have all of that beautiful quilting. When all said and done, this is definitely a new way of marking our quilts. We need to be able to see through the fabric in order to mark the backing. But other than that, we're just quilting it upside down. I'll put a link in the description to a video where I talk about doing this backwards or upside down quilting. And I'll also put a link to the pantographs that I've used and a couple of free ones if you want to give it a try. And thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're quilting next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.